Let's turn to uh, number 657 in your 99 Methodist Pimple. We'll start by singing This Is The Day. We'll sing it twice through. Song, so I'm going to turn it right over to you. Bring Steve does, but no anniversaries, no birthdays? 
I, we don't have any. I just ones. have a couple from my other church. I was looking in the, my newsletter this morning. A couple of my youth group members, I think they're brother and sister, and one's the six and one's the eight. So it's, oh boy, Hannah and I can't remember her brother's name. So just happy birthday to them. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Well, just for announcement that next Sunday, of course, is Easter, and we're going to be having a breakfast in the morning, right, Debbie? Flynn? Mm -hmm. And are you <laughs> organizing that one? <laughs> oh, yes. that's great. I'll ask them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like I am. That was, oh, that was planned because I didn't catch you. So we will be surprised what you're getting. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sunrise service a little later than sunrise. We come right here for sunrise service at 7:30. 7:30. So we'll celebrate. Yeah, I'll help. Thank you. Check for Debbie or Debbie. 7:30, and then we'll go right into breakfast from that service. So we'll see you over for the morning. Hope you can join us, and then after that service, we'll have our main service. So lots of lots of praise in the Lord next Sunday morning. Thank you. 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 Thank and I have an announcement to make. Uh, I don't know if everybody's aware of it or not, but Trevor was, when he was born, was born with ADHD and autism. And what you and I do every day, and we just take it for granted, he has to struggle at it. He has to think about it and he has to do it. And he does a wonderful job doing anything in life that he's asked to do. I just went down last Friday to a school where he goes at Gloversville High School. They do an awards ceremony every couple of months for the children that are there. And Trevor was awarded Student of the Month. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And Student of the Month for Trevor was, he gives himself 200% for everybody else. And when he does something, he puts 200% into it to make it the best that he could possibly do. So dad couldn't be any problem. <laughs> now, today, our call to worship is Psalm 121 on pages 965 to 966 of our pew Bible. And I'll do some reading for you. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He is who watches over you and will never slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will never slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you that day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over <coughs> excuse me, your comings and goings both now and forevermore. Amen to that. Our opening prayer today is found in your hand out there. Today, God, we rejoice with Christians everywhere that there was at least one day when Jesus received the recognition that he deserved. We rejoice, knowing that his triumphant entry means the truth cannot remain hidden and that the good hearts everywhere recognize truth when it appears. We persist in hope with people on many continents. In many circumstances who are waiting for the day when their truth can be told. We preserve with them in faith, knowing that the same God who could have commanded the rocks to shout truth in Jerusalem will not allow truth to be suppressed and good people to be crushed forever. Amen. 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 Where are we going now? I don't know. Oh, we got we got to have this. Oh, we're in a place. 
all the chemo and all the poisonous drugs. The biggest issue she has right now is she has PTSD from so much shit that she went through and she's going to horse therapy. Yeah. And she's wow. doing fabulous at some place over in, in Saratoga, of course, and it's really helping her a lot. So keep the prayers up for little Azalea, but God is good. She, she's, she's still hanging in there and doing well. <coughs> a couple of weeks ago, I asked you to pray for a friend who had a tumor and was having surgery, mm -hmm. and the, the cancer did not spread. The tumor is out, and they are very, very optimistic. Uh, so thank you for your prayers. Thank you. Thank, thank you for sharing. Nice to hear. Yeah, here comes a couple more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. House, full house today. Yes. So, Today. Yesterday we had an Easter egg hunt, so we're starting to celebrate <laughs> Easter, and Marjorie was there, and Sue, thank you for your help with that. So we did it inside a community hall down in the basement, so we may do. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Well, we could. Yes. Good. 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 That's wonderful. I saw, I saw some pictures on Facebook. I was telling Sue about that. 
but it looks like a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I'm just happy to be here. The weather is beautiful. The ride is always beautiful. These are all friendly faces. So. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have you yes. here. So welcome. And welcome our friends from Riversville. Look at it. Where are you going to sit today? <laughs> Today. Right here, I guess. That's fine. Sure. I've got a list. Oh. Uh, <laughs> they laugh at me at my other church things. So, not that I'm counting, but three months till retirement. Yay. Yay. Everybody asked me the days. I said, I don't know. I just go by months. <laughs> I want to just say thank you for all of the music that you do here. I guess, um, and yes, all the people here, and um, yeah, thank you for yesterday for Alice and whoever does the, like the library, and and um, my grandson was able to come up yesterday, so got to see him for a while, and he was eight months old, and he was just trying to eat the eggs, he could care less about <laughs> trying to get him, so <laughs> just fun stuff. Keep it up, this is good stuff, we can have the whole Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Elsie. Yes, I would like to thank everybody for prayer. Mm -hmm. I'll have this home. Yes, yeah, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome. It's good to thank see you back here again. So. Well, the we, doctor. We discussed your dog. The man told me to keep her something. <laughs> so, I'll take it. And the dog likes to play tricks, right? Yeah, see? <laughs> And we have we have an AA meeting starting here in church, and the date of that start date is what? Uh, April twenty first. April twenty first. We'll be out here at six, six o'clock every Friday, six o'clock. It's called the Well Solution Group. Oh. And um, pass the word, and if you have any questions, I, I can answer them. But the community is very excited that you know I was in Northville at a meeting uh, last night, and I had flyers made. And so we're very excited to bring that to Wells. So thank you for the space. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I have one more. Sure. I more on I'm sorry, I'm full of it tonight. <laughs> so this morning I was looking out the window. First I saw the otter playing around out there. And then the bald eagle came and he sat on the, the ice too. So just beautiful. And like, yeah, spring is coming. And I always thank Debbie for being the realtor for the other people for my camp because God bless you. Thank you. And <laughs> the best thing I ever did. And we have a baptism coming later. Right, Margie? Yes. Oh, yeah. Margie? Yeah. That'll be uh, 23rd. Yep. Right. Exciting things happen. Okay, one more. Yes. Uh, I was thinking, I forgot to thank Sylvia again for all this time. Any kind of loves her. She ignores me and waits for Sylvia to come. Well, just like you can. Yeah. All right, one more. Steve. All right, here comes some more. That's Teresa. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're all right. My daughter. Yeah. 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 I have one more. Uh, I haven't been a religious man my whole life, but I'm starting to get more into it every day. And I'd like to thank you and Marty and everybody here in the church, Alice, the people that make this church happen. I didn't realize until I've been sitting back just kind of looking around just how much work is involved to make a church uh, a good place to be. And you guys are to all be commended for it because Crystal, I mean, everybody that puts into it, it is outstandingly unbelievable. Everybody. Everybody. The people that come uh, to, to be with us and worship with us is... It's a large group. It, yeah. is, it is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's teamwork. It yep. is. You know, why are different Marty and I went, and, and Marty went to the play up in... Like wasn't Yeah, we'll talk about that. That's just Sister Act. Sister Act Jr., they were great. Oh, they were great. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They were great. All right, any, any other uh, joys to share? What a nice... Well, we get together with our community church on Tuesday, so that was just nice to get right. together. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Our, uh, our pastor uh, support, I mean, 
Pastor Reverend Penny Frank, who's an ordained elder, was here for dinner. She, she's going to join us once a quarter here. She's the, she's the coordinating pastor for our mountain community and for this church, because Ellie and I are the, our official ordained elders or are even local pastors. We're, we're lay, uh, certified lay ministers, ministers, they call us. So in certain items, we have to have an ordained elder present, like the baptism should be there for that. Uh, things like that, marriages. But well, we can basically do everything. And, and I will be much involved in uh, Pastor Penny's so, so I'll be doing most of it. So, we shall see. <laughs> so anyway, so that's the situation. And she came, and she had a wonderful time. And she said, I want to come back and sing with you people all the while. <laughs> and she, had, she went back and shared what we did with her prayer group. She was singing for us. She liked the pizza, right? She liked the pizza. <laughs> she liked the pizza. <laughs> so it was good stuff. Good stuff. Pizza was really good. <laughs> all right. Have, what about consumption? Yeah, I don't know. God hears all of our prayers. He just heard all of this. Our celebrations, our praises, our concerns. So I'm not going to repeat them all. But I'm just going to say uh, he is first. He hears you when you pray. He knows what you're thinking before you pray. So he's with you. Silent concerns in this sanctuary. He's with us all. He knows it all. He's with you through whatever, what, whatever you're going through. So let's just uh, say amen to all we've heard here, and we'll say the Lord's Prayer, and we'll go on. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, God. All right, what are we doing next? I, I lost all track of this. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, it's our chance to come back. Sunday, but it's back there. So if you have some change or you want to put paper money in, that's good too. So it supports our admissions. So I invite you to rise and sing the doctology if you're able. you give us each and every day. We praise you for those that are giving back monetarily. We praise you though for those that give back in their service, in their prayers, or however they work to you in this, this church and in your world, Lord. They all matter to you and they all matter to us. We give you thanks. And now we ask you, Lord, to guide us how we should use these funds best for our, this church, for our community here in Wells, and our bigger community in your world, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing. Imagine that. Some music, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
How could I mark these pages exactly where I'm supposed to be and still not be able to find it? <laughs> <laughs> Today's scriptures that we'll be reading are, the first one is Matthew 21, 1 through 11, is found on page 1531 and 1532 of your pew. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage in the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tired there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, say your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted. <coughs> Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes to the name of the Lord. Hosanna is in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The second reading we're going to do is uh, Mark 11, 11 through 18, and it's on five, uh, 1573 in your pew Bible. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. But since he was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. <coughs> When Jesus clears the temple the next day as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry, seeing in the distance a fig tree and a leaf. He went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling bells, and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. As he had taught them, he said, it is not written. My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. But if you have made it a den of robbers, the chief priests and the teachers of the law heard and began looking for him in a way to kill him. And for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. The word of God for the people of God. I've been asked today to give our children a message. I thought long and hard about it, and I came up with a message. And the message is one word, and that's faith. And I'm going to tell you a true story about a man that you all know that experienced faith in his own way. When I grew up, as I said before, I didn't grow up in a religious family. I grew up in mom and dad didn't go to church. We just didn't go to church wasn't part of our lives. I knew nothing of the Bible, knew nothing of the good Lord above, but managed to make it into my high school year. In my senior year, as I walked into gym class, the gym teacher said to all of us, the state of New York has set down curriculum, and you have to follow the curriculum 
in order to pass gym in order to graduate high school. Part of the curriculum, there was these ropes about that big around, and they went from the floor to the ceiling. Well, if you look at a gym, it's about 40 feet up to the ceiling. So I'm thinking to myself, man, I get up there, I get tired, I slip, I get a cramp, I fall, I'm going to be dead. I ain't doing that. No way. Not doing it. Don't care if I pass school or not. I'm not doing it. When I went through the school year until the day of the test, throughout the school year, every time we had those ropes, I'd climb up 10 or 12 feet and come back down. Good enough for me, I did it. <laughs> the gym teacher said to me, he said, Gary, can I talk to you for a minute? And I said, sure. So he called me out to one side, and he said, I gotta ask you a question. He said, you're probably one of the toughest, strongest kids that I have in my class. Why is it you won't climb those ropes? I looked around to make sure nobody was listening to me, and I said, because I don't want to die. <laughs> what happens if I get up there, and something happens and I fall? I'm dead when I hit the floor, or seriously hurt. He said, Gary, I got one word for you, and that word is faith. And he turned around and walked away. And I thought, okay, faith. Not 100% sure what he means, but he said faith. Came the day of the test, and he walked over to me. I'm in line waiting to climb these ropes. And he said, Gary, did you fully understand what I meant when I said faith? I said, not 100%, no. He said, let me explain to what faith is. God has faith in everyone. Now, you need faith in yourself. <clears throat> and if you have faith in yourself and you have faith in God, you can do anything in this world that you want to do. And he goes, and if you don't climb those ropes, I got to fail you. <laughs> so I thought about it for a minute, and I said, well, you know what? I only got to do it once. <laughs> and if I fall and get killed, I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> so, okay, I'll do it. So I went over to the ropes, and I got ready, and I climbed all the way to the top, and I touched the I-beam, and I climbed all the way back down. And without realizing what I said, when I hit the floor, I said, oh, Thank you, God. <laughs> the teacher heard what I said. Came along to graduation day. We're all standing there getting ready to graduate. The gym teacher walks over and he said, Did you understand what I said when I met Faith? And I said, Well, I do now that you've explained it. Yes, I understand what it is. He said, If you have faith in yourself and faith in the Lord, you can move mountains. You can do anything in this world that you want to do, but you have to have faith. He said, what are you going to do when you graduate high school? I said, well, I've always wanted to be a paramedic. Always. By the time I was big enough to walk. He said, well, you'll be a good one. And that was it. I graduated high school. Got enrolled in the paramedic class, and I'm sitting there one night doing my homework. And... Learning every aspect of the human body and learning all the drugs that we had to give and doses. And I'm going, oh, I cannot do this. This is more than what I really thought I was going to get into. And then I remembered what he said. And he said, if you have faith in yourself and you have faith in the Lord, you can do anything you want to do. Thirty years later, I retired as a paramedic. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you, Pastor. May the words of Steve's mouth and the mediation of his heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, and rock our Redeemer forever. And thank you, Steve, for everything you do. Amen. Thank you. All right. So there's a good message. I don't really need to go much further. But <laughs> a couple things I will certainly 
short at all. <laughs> you don't want to keep your own day. But we're talking about pounds and quotes and tables today. That was the way I labeled my, uh, my sermon. I mean, we, we, heard the, we started with the uh, songs about entering Jerusalem with the pounds. You all have pounds. If you didn't get one, by the way, there are more up here, so please feel free to grab some. If you want more than one to take home to whatever, please do that as well. So we're entering Lent. I really I, we entered Lent. Um, this is the last Sunday in Lent. It's the sixth Sunday. We're going into the last week of Lent. Started with Ash Wednesday. Ash, the ashes we, we started with, with were from last year's palms, and then we, then we saved for this year and, and uh, crushed up, and we'll put ashes on our heads next year from last year's palms. But uh, what is Palm Sunday all about? What's it all about? Okay, end the sermon. You have to think about that. <laughs> now, what was Lent all about? You know about that, right? You gave up something, or what? Or maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But I told you you didn't really have to give up anything, right? It's not really about the giving up. It's about realizing that you're missing something in your life. If you give up something, you realize you're missing that something, and then you stop and think about it, and you're supposed to focus on God. So, so when is the time when we focus on God, draw closer to God? So we had 40 days of that, or we will have had 40 days of that, not including Sundays, when we uh, come out of that next Sunday morning and praise the risen Christ. So that's the end of Lent. But that's what Lent is all about. Now what about riding into the Riding into the city of the palms wait. What was that? Well, Jesus came and he, he told him, as you heard in the scripture, to go out. He told his disciples to go out and uh, find a donkey in his colt tied up. Tied up. You go and tie it. If somebody asks you what you're doing that for, just tell them that the Lord needs it. They'll say, okay. Well, can you imagine that? In today's world, if you were went out and went into the street and took somebody's car and, and they came and said, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> you said, oh, my friend needs it to, to drive in a parade in town, right? You might go ahead and tell them, But Jesus, Jesus, of course, just knows everything. And uh, God the Father knows everything and so is the Spirit. It's, it's a little, uh, little bit of a recognition of the, the uh, three in one. The three in one, the Holy, Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three in one. So a little bit of that there. Because Jesus knew everything. He knew what was going to happen. He knew what, he knew that uh, they expected him to ride in as a king. They, they expected him to ride in as a king on a horse. On a, like a conquering King. What did he do? He came in on a mini donkey. <laughs> mini donkey. Yeah, they untied this, this uh, donkey and it's cold and he took the Jesus. And he chose the most humble, most lowly thing. Jesus was, uh, was like us. He wanted to show that he was humble like us. He's a humble king. He cares for us more than we'd ever know. And he wanted to show us that he understood. He understood. So we got on that donkey and rode in. People were waving their palms. I didn't see you marching around the church and waving palms. But that's, that's what they were doing. They were saying, Hosanna. Hosanna, praise you, the Lord. The one that comes in the name of the Lord. Come save us. Like I said, that's what it meant. That's what it meant. They recognized that they were in trouble. They needed, they needed saving. They were being impressed by the Romans and the, actually the Pharisees. The Pharisees in the background, Jesus knew this too. The Pharisees were planning to kill him. They were jealous. They were jealous of all the recognition that he had. Where did he go after he rode through town? He went to the temple. Looked around. We saw that in the second scripture that Gary read. Mm -hmm. He looked around and 
and then it was late, so he went back out uh, to Bethany, I think they said. Then he went back in and found money changers in there. Money changers. What were they doing? They were selling, buying, selling. Selling things for worship, perfect animals. You had to be perfect. Things couldn't have a blemish on them if they were used for sacrifice for the Lord in the temple. So uh, they were selling, and they were doing things that Jesus, Jesus didn't like. There's a lot of a lot of theories on why Jesus didn't like it, and one of them was, one of them was that uh, they were charging extra, extra, uh, extreme. Uh, Prices and the poor couldn't afford it. Uh, another one was that uh, it was against the temple tax or, or whatever. Uh, I had it all written there, but I, I can't <laughs> explain it well. So just, just know that there are several different theories, but the one that uh, one that speaks to me most, what I really think of, is that uh, Jesus was upset because God's house was being used for something that wasn't supposed to. God's house was used for worshiping the Lord and not for buying and selling. It's not for merchants to come here and set up a shop, sell something. And how would that relate to our church today? What if somebody came here and uh, for a political purpose, for a political purpose, they came and uh, because they were running for office. This is similar. This is similar. They come to promote something and not come to worship the Lord. So, so this is, uh, I'm not saying that we should not support people in their interests, in their jobs or whatever, but we're here to support each other, but not to support an agenda that, doesn't, that God does not approve of. So I'll just, uh, I think I'll uh, end it there, but you understand where I'm coming from, right? So we're here to worship the Lord. This is the Lord's house. So this is what we are here for. It's not for selling and buying. It's not for any other purpose, for advertising, for putting on a show. It's for supporting each other. Like Gary said, we're all working as a team here. We all lift each other up. So that's what it's all about. That's what, uh, that's what God is all about. Jesus came to serve as a humble, a lowly person, just to do good, to heal and forgive. But he, he started changing. He, he changed, Jesus changed them to the mighty king and ruler that they were looking for to ride into town, but, but he didn't do it that day. He rode in on a colt just to show the people he was like them. But when he got towards the end, the end of what, a couple of days later, he was in that temple throwing the tables around. I see a change in him at that point, changing to, to the authority figure, the ruler. But then he went back a little bit later and he washed the disciples' feet at the Last Supper. And we'll talk about that later. We have a service on Friday night. You're all invited here at 7 o'clock for Good Friday service. We'll talk about that more at that time. But right now, remember, Jesus loves you more than you ever know, you know. He's just like us. He was just like us in body, but yet he's a king. He's a king. He understands everything we go through. He knows our thoughts, our feelings, our prayers, as we talked about earlier. But we say them out loud enough. And he left us here to do his work. I've talked about that before. Jesus went back to heaven. But how does his word spread? It spreads through us, being humble, being ourselves, talking to other people, just like Jesus presented himself lowly in that ride down through Jerusalem on the colt. Humble people. Humble people. Like, just like Gary gave a, gave us, gave a uh, children's story this morning. He, he shared some things out of his heart just the season experience. That's the way we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be humble. And so so that's, uh, that's a little bit about Palm Sunday. Maybe you never thought about it that way before. So that's the way I see it. So going forward in the week, we'll talk about the rest of this Fashion Week, which is not 
so pleasant and joyful, but it's part of the story. We need to know it. We need to remember it. Remember that Jesus died for us people, us lonely people, so that we could be forgiven for our sins. So, amen. Right? amen. We'll go to uh, the second page in our white worship books as we go to uh, the communion. <laughs> that we can think of that would separate us from the love of God in Christ. God's grace clears the way for us, so let us humbly seek to live in peace and grace with God. Then I ask you to repeat the prayer of confession as we read it together, as is in this book. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you by our whole heart. We have failed to be the leaders of the church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have forgotten what you are. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of need. Forgive us, Lord. Free us from joyful obedience to Jesus Christ. Amen. These elements have been consecrated by a more gay elder. Uh, Pastor Penny uh, actually blessed, I don't know if this is the same. Same bread elements, but she bought some when she was here this earlier this week. And uh, that was passed by John, a Reverend Roy, and he was here, I think, last. So, anyways, these have been blessed. Consecrated. So, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, we come before you with thankful hearts. On the night Jesus died, he invited his disciples to come to the table and partake of this bread and this cup, symbols of the new covenant, soon to be written in his blood. They represent to us the body and the blood of Christ that was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. On the last night, Jesus was with his disciples, and he left them this tangible remembrance that we have continued to share to this day. We remember the mighty acts in Jesus Christ, and we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, joining with Christ's offering for us, for us, your Holy Spirit, on us gathered here today. Make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world as we remember him at this table. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So remember when they gathered at that table that night. Jesus again humbled himself. There's there were people there, as you well know, that were going to betray him. But he humbled himself. He served all at the table. Even though he knew he was going to be put to death, the Lord was going to betray him at the table. And he watched the feet of all the people there. A humble servant. He still served before he, before he went to the cross for us. So on that night, he took the bread and he broke it. He said, Whatever you, you do this, whenever you gather together, do this in remembrance of me. He shared it with his disciples, even the one that would be great. And he took the cup, and similarly, he said, When you drink this cup, represents my blood. Do it in remembrance of me. The blood that he shed. So we remember that as we go into this passion, this week of passion, violence, whippings, 
nail the nails and the hands and the feet to the moon. So now I'm going to open the table up and offer you, uh, so you can come and uh, come and uh, partake as you are led to do so. If you cannot come forward, we will bring it to you. Jerry, I would ask you to come and share it if you would. Here we'll go right down here front, Jerry. Oh, wait, front? Okay. So the table is open. You're invited to come. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Please be with us and direct us and let us go into the world in strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to uh, number 261 in the hymnal 
and we'll sing the story of this passion week, The Lord of the Dance. I don't know if you realize what this is actually telling us. This is the story. So if you want to get around and uh, dance and uh, I can't do that play. <laughs> you can leave us off the I would love to do it. Now we ask you to be with us as we go forward through this book, through this week, and recognize what you did for us. Lord, you sent your son Jesus here for us to humble himself. He came, he served, he healed, he raised Lazarus from the dead. He put himself in the hands of those that would put him on the cross. They would torture him and nail him to that cross. 
for us, for our salvation, so that we may be forgiven for our sins, that we may one day rise again to him from the dead and be with him through eternity forever. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we go to the benediction. And this is a uh, responsive. This is a little different than the regular benediction. So where you see the bowl is your part. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God is the best love and us forever. Amen. We go from this place crying out for salvation. Come, Come save us. Amen. We go from this place ready to follow Jesus to the garden, the cross, and the tomb. Come, Come save us. Amen. We go from this place ready to pay attention as the waving of palms turns to a silence of crucifixion. Come save us, Hosanna. We go from this place knowing that even in death, God's love endures. Come save us, Hosanna. Come save us, Hosanna. Well, thank you for coming. You have a great day and a great week. And we'll uh, see you.